Hey guys, it's Edwin. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you've probably noticed that my content has been evolving. I like change. And something that I've been wanting to dive into is interviewing people who don't have a voice or whose words have been misconstrued. In 2014, a YouTuber that goes by the name Dori Clark made a video recalling her experience in Amsterdam with a friend of mine, Karima Bridged. In her video, Dori made some pretty serious allegations causing lots of outrage and leading fans and other YouTube creators to bully Karima into silence. Now, for the first time in over four years, Karim will be speaking his piece. Just to clarify, Karim does not deserve his audience. He does not des be, oh crap. He does not deserve to be a public figure. Now the video is obviously, uh, it's pretty serious. Um, in the video, she claims that you guys had a uh, trip to Amsterdam, you, her, Evan, and another friend. Yeah, Ali and Jordan. Just vlogging, just, just vlogging it up. What are you doing, Karim? Having some fun? Yeah. Ali and I can't fit in the chair. So her legs interlock like a zipper. From my understanding of her video, you guys had one bed in the hotel and it was supposed to be her on this and the bed with Evan because she knows him better. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna sleep on the sofa, but you didn't want to. So eventually Evan said, okay, you can sleep on the bed. So all you guys three were sharing a single bed. Mm -hmm. And um, you felt uncomfortable next to Evan because according to her, she said that you kept getting up and saying, oh, he touched my dick. And then she said, yeah. obviously he didn't. Krim literally wouldn't shut up and it was quite late. Um, he kept jumping out of bed and being like, oh, Evan, you touched my dick, which obviously he didn't. And that's kind of homophobic anyway. He was just like, oh, what the fuck, Evan, no, don't do that. Uh. And he literally wouldn't just shut up. Did he? Okay, so. Yeah, that was a weird part of the story to me on her video. Cause like, yeah. I feel like she kind of brushed it off and it kind of made me feel weird. Um, okay, so the, we had an Airbnb when we oh, okay. stayed in Amsterdam. There were two bedrooms. Um, Evan and Dodi were to share one room and then I was supposed to share a room with Ali. And because they uh, both just had double beds, um, I didn't feel comfortable enough to sleep or share the bed with Ali. So I was like, I'll just sleep on the sofa. And at the time, my mind state wasn't like 100% because I was feeling like left out a lot from uh, that whole community. Um, and I was going to be alone in Patty's house at the time. So that's why I agreed to even go on this trip because Evan was like, oh, hey, like, I don't want you to be alone at home for two weeks. Come along. And I thought it would have been like a good idea okay, to Evan invited do that. Him. Yeah, yeah. So Evan invited me. And then um, the first night I slept on the sofa and... Um, I just wasn't feeling great. Like I, I didn't feel happy at the time, um, which I feel like is apparent through like Evan's vlogs um, that he did whilst we were out there. So the second night comes around and we, um, like we start drinking. Uh, we picked up wine at, at like a local store and just um, chilled at the apartment. Evan was like, oh, um, we should do pot brownies, you know, we're in Amsterdam, like when in Rome, you know, like going along with it. Um, I told them that I didn't feel comfortable um, taking weed or like eating edibles at the time. Um, and then later on in the night, they like, he was like, oh, I'll just buy them anyway, like one for each of us. And then if you want to do it later on, you can. Um, so when he had them, um, I've, I felt very pressured in like eating it because everyone was like, oh, it's fine. Look, come on, like Dodie ate one and like she doesn't even do weed. So like I felt like peer pressured into doing something that I wasn't comfortable with. And because I had already drank, I was like, you know what? Like whatever, like I'll just do it. And then I, towards the end of the night, I started feeling like very anxious and um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, like I was just not in a good mind state. And I asked Evan if I could um, sleep with them because I didn't want to be alone and I didn't want to like sleep alone in the living room by myself on the sofa. Karim came in and started basically heavily hinting that he wanted to sleep in the bed. While this was going on, I was looking at Evan and being like, please don't, please don't let him do that. Like, I don't feel comfortable with this. Evan let him in the bed. He was like, yeah, sure. Like, just come into bed, dude, whatever. So like a couple minutes passed and we all um, get into our pajamas, get into bed. And um, we were all sharing a double bed. And it went me, Evan, Dodie. So Evan was in the middle. Right. And when I got into bed, Evan's hand was like by his side. And um, 
a few minutes into us just laying in bed, like he kind of moved his hand and I was like, oh dude, you touched my dick. He just laughed it off. Um, and then, uh, shit. He laughed it off and then um, I expressed that I didn't feel comfortable like with him doing that and then he, like I just got back into bed because I was tired, like I just wanted to go to sleep. Was it like accidental or like a joke? Or... Okay, see, even if it was accidental at first, when I got back into the bed, he did it again. So, and like, even if it was a joke, like I had expressed to him that I felt uncomfortable with him doing that. And then he did it again, like maybe as a joke or whatever, but the fact still stands that he did it twice. But like, okay, so after he did it, what was his reaction to you? Like him saying like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he's just like, ha, 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 like, uh, like just trying to laugh it off, okay. basically. Uh, I don't know what was going through his head exactly. Okay, because because Dodi believed that didn't happen, so that's what I'm wondering. Like, is he like, oh, stop it! Like, that didn't happen. Like, mm, she yeah. also said what was really weird was that she was like, it was kind of homophobic. Oh, Evan, you touched my dick, which obviously he didn't, and that's kind of homophobic anyway. And I have no problem with gay people. I have no problem with any people, like anyone on like the spectrum of sexuality. Well, there's, there's, okay, yeah, there's, so, uh, like, if unwanted contact is unwanted contact. I mean, it, like it shouldn't matter. Like if a, if a guy does it to another guy, it mm. doesn't make you homophobic to be like uncomfortable by it, you know? Of course. And um, yeah, so like she was visibly irritated by me getting out of bed and she was just like, you know what? Like just come like sleep on my side. It was just like, oh, what the f Evan, no, don't do that. Uh. And he literally wouldn't just sh shut up. So I was like, fine. You know what? Fine. Krim, sleep next to me. That's fine. So then the bed, uh, the sleeping arrangement on the double bed went uh, Evan, Dodie, and then me against a radiator. And um, Evan being like six foot something was taking up like half of the double bed. And then Dodie was in the middle, but like closer to... Um, like the end of the bed because he was taking up half it's hard to explain without like visibly showing you so when she said come sleep on my side i literally had to sleep with my back against a radiator and then like she was literally like here and so we all went to bed like i was essentially spooning her with like a bit of a gap in between us and then she was against evan and then like we all just went to sleep um and Later on in the night, um, I was woken up by her sort of like moving her shoulder back into me and she was like, stop cuddling me or something along those lines. And I then turned over, went back to sleep and then woke up later on in the night feeling like super dehydrated. I had a headache from us previously drinking and eating edibles. So then I got up out of bed, went to the kitchen got myself a drink and she proceeded to do the same thing we had like a brief conversation i was like oh how you like how did you manage to sleep like how are you feeling she was like oh i feel a bit dead like i, I just have a bit of a headache so i came to get one i was like yeah me too um i went to the bathroom and then went back into bed Damn it. battery died so we have to charge it for a bit take a little break but i was just asking him how he's feeling um, oh my god we didn't close the closet uh, and I was saying that I felt a bit anxious because I had to relive the whole experience and um, because of the whole video I feel like scared to even relive that night when I know that like I was essentially sexually abused that night and it was brushed over and she just like it's hard to explain. She she sort of just like twisted something to fit a narrative and brushed off my experience as if it was nothing. And like even to the point where she was like calling me homophobic and being like, oh, like even if he did do that, it's okay. Like it wasn't okay. Like none of that was okay. Like I... Oh, I understand. I mean... I well, okay. See, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I don't know what to respond because I don't want to seem like I'm sympathizing and make it seem biased. But I've also been in situations where like a, a guy just touches you and it's like, it's it's not a big problem. Like guys are not supposed to kind of say anything or whatever. It's just like not seeing is a big deal. It's kind of a, I don't know. It's, 
It's a joke to some people. Like people yeah. don't take it seriously. That's why I jumped out of bed. Like that's why I didn't feel comfortable laying next to him and I even got out of bed after he did it again. And like, I know Dodie couldn't have obviously witnessed that because it was under covers. But still, I don't feel like, I feel like she should have taken a bit more seriously I mean, and not it, just been like, oh, it's Evan or like, oh, whatever. Even through her accounts so though, she even, she, she does also retell that. So I, I do feel like, like that is some, some interesting like bias on her end because she's just saying, oh, she, she's acknowledging what you did and what you said, but giving you absolutely no credit because she she's doesn't like Evan. you or yeah, th yeah, that or likes him better, etc. Evan is a very close friend of mine, not going out, definitely no romantic interest there from either side. We are purely best buds, like just good friends. I mean, I, I think honestly out of her video, out of what I saw from her video, I think that would be the biggest point to dispute. Other than that, another thing that only kind of bothered me is when in the beginning she said trigger warning, trigger warning, rape, trigger warning. Trigger warning, trigger warning, rape, trigger warning. People still message me like, why are you hanging out with a rapist? And I'm like, yeah. What? Like that, you've, you've not done that by anybody's count. That's another thing that's affected me a lot, which is she left it so open to interpretation and like um, never even try to clarify people's stories or like, oh no, this is what actually happened, guys. Like, I don't know, she kind of just let the internet go with it. And I was left in a position where I was alone I felt like I had no friends. I had no one that I could turn to. And I just felt like, like, what can I do other than like post things on the internet and try to like clarify my story. But every time I tried to say anything, either her or her friends would attack me online and then their fans would then follow and expand on what they said and sort of just like went along with like this, um, this story that was left so open yeah and obviously we we should get to that but by her accounts she says that you you felt her like her her stomach and also her her chest i woke up in the middle of the night um with Krim pressed up against me and his hands like kind of tickling stroking my stomach. So Krim's hands were kind of tickling around my stomach area and a little bit lower down and kind of all over my chest. Now I think we were both awake, I'm pretty sure. When it was like 20 minutes later or half an hour later or an hour later, I don't even know. I kind of whispered and I went, Krim, stop. And then she said stop. Um, well, to my knowledge, I was just woken up from sleep and she was like, stop cuddling me. So I turned around and slept with my chest against the radiator. Mm -hmm. Like, because when I was half asleep, I just wanted to sleep after like that night. And um, yeah, like if anyone tells me to stop doing something, regardless of where, whether it's sexual or not, or just anything, like I'm not the kind, I don't feel like I am the kind of person who would willingly make someone feel uncomfortable or put them in a position where they feel like they're helpless, especially a friend. And that is something like, I considered her a good friend because in the past, like she had like been nice to me and like she like spread nothing but positivity in my life. So I wanted to sort of like repay her by like giving her confidence. Like, so for example, whenever she'd be like, oh, I don't look beautiful today or like I don't feel like I look good or like, oh, I look ugly. Like I'd always compliment her and be like, no, like you look great, like you look amazing. You're like such an amazing person and that sort of thing. And like that was what hurt the most for me is that I felt like um, my friends had the wrong impression of who I am as a person. When I felt like they like really knew me, you know, like they, like some of them had helped me with so much mentally and like emotionally and just in so many different ways and I'm forever thankful for them. And I had even spoke to her about that multiple times. There was a phone call, I spoke to her over message and then she also messaged me um, before she put out the video. And at the time I didn't have um, mobile data so I had to like use McDonald's Wi-Fi or whatever. Like I wasn't trying to downplay her experience or 
tell her that what she experienced wasn't true because I understand that people can perceive um, different situations in different ways. And I just wanted her to sort of understand where I was coming from and like where my true intentions were at that night specifically. I have had personal experiences with sexual abuse. So from my perspective, like when I was, um, there's been countless um, things that have happened to me throughout my life. So for example, when I was younger, um, I had a family member who did some, quite, I'd say questionable, he sexually abused me when I was a kid. Okay. And that traumatized me for like the rest of my life. And even recently, like, um, I went to a friend's house and I got drunk, like super drunk to the point where I had passed out and a girl took advantage of me. And like, she had literally actually raped me. Like she forced herself onto me whilst I was barely conscious and performed acts on me. So I understand how someone in that position would feel and how vulnerable it makes them feel and like how having gone through that personally like i would never do that to anyone like i w i can't imagine like ever doing that to someone because i've gone through it myself and like i just don't see how i could then go and do that to someone when i know how it feels you know what i mean like I just can't, like I... All throughout the trip, Karim was very flirty. He'd ask for a lot of hugs, and this was okay, like, flirty guys, it's fine. In her video she called you flirty and she said you asked for hugs a lot. Do you think she mistook you from early on as like having a crush on her or something like that? Yeah, so uh, in her video she stated that I was um, infatuated with her. Well, she said you infatuated with her? Yeah. Karim likes to use his Twitter and his following to like ship him and someone who he's infatuated with so that his audience will just assume that they're going out or something's happening. So she obviously believed that I did have feelings for her or like I, I uh, wanted to pursue her romantically or something along those lines. But like I've said to Evan and to Dodie after that fact, I was seeing someone at the time and I hug all of my friends, ask, well, I say ask Luke, but... I think you are a big hugger. Yeah, yeah, it's just, like, to me, it's, um, sort of, like, thanks for being in my life, like, thanks for... You probably hug less since I met yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm very cautious about my actions towards people and how they can be misunderstood, and, um, I, I'm very aware now of, um sort of like whether people feel uncomfortable or not. And I'm not saying that I, I wasn't back then. I'm just more observant of like how people look at me and like how they perceive my actions. Like, and I'm always worried that I'll be misunderstood. She also said on the coach back from Amsterdam that mm -hmm. you did it again. And like, she literally told you to stop or something like that. Even on the coach back, he still started doing it. And I was literally, I literally looked and I was like, Seriously? Like, stop. Just stop. Oh my gosh, just stop. Okay, so on the way back from Amsterdam, um, Ali had left early, like a day early, so he wasn't with us at the time. It was just me, Dodie and Evan getting the coach back at like crazy hours in the morning. We were all very tired and like exhausted because the coach had been late um, and we all ended up just falling asleep on the coach and we were sat at the back so... Dodie had the window seat, I had the seat in between her and Evan. Evan had fallen asleep, sort of like leaning towards my side. Um, so I already didn't have much space. And I kind of just sat down and like rested my head. Um, like it was on her lap, but also on my knee because we were so close together. Um, she had fallen asleep with like her head against the either the window or like a wall just before the window or something like that and yeah to my knowledge we all just went to sleep woke up in london and then like we all parted ways say said like oh, oh nice so she, hanging out she didn't say literally stop or no oh okay she didn't say anything on the coach did you guys end up talking after she posted the video 
Um, after the video? No, like that's when everyone uh, cut contact with me. And um, like I even tried to reach out to people and was like, look, uh, this is my side of the story. Like, please just hear me out type of thing. So your old friends didn't really want to listen? Or... No, like none, no one replied to my texts. Uh, no one like even gave me the option. That's of, crazy. Like, I, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's a little crazy because, you know, for the little amount of time you're on YouTube, hmm. you blew up to like 70 to 80,000 subscribers um, in like less than two years, which is pretty crazy, especially in 2014. You know, that's crazy yeah. enough for anybody. But like even like the long, I feel like the longer that YouTube is around, the harder it is to keep getting subscribers and like and numbers then meant more now. Like now any, any guy can have 100,000 subscribers. Look at me. <laughs> but um you know, so you're doing pretty well for yourself and you, you know, it seemed like you were pretty well connected and then you just got like dropped. Essentially, throughout that trip, Evan was always commenting on like how like much I was gaining at the time and like how I was going to overtake him. When did Dodie first confront you about what happened in Amsterdam? Uh, it was when we were filming, I say we, when Jason was filming his apology video, uh, Evan uh, picked up the phone and he was like talking to Dodi and then he well I didn't know it was Dodi at the time I only knew until he handed me the phone and was like Dodi wants to speak to you I was like oh cool hey Dodi like what's up um, and then she explained how she felt um, on the trip or like what like her experience um, and then I told her like my side of things uh, my intentions how I viewed her as a person like as how I just saw her as a friend and nothing more than that um, I think I even mentioned that I was seeing someone at the time. I was just apologetic of like what she felt had uh, transpired between us. Um, and then to like further be like, oh, I, I hope you don't see me in a way, like I don't hope, I hope you don't think of me like weirdly or anything. Uh, I messaged her after the phone call and I was like, Hey, I'm sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. Wait, okay. So, in the phone call, did she like? How, how did she react to you saying all that? Like, like it wasn't my intention and stuff. How oh, she, she was like, oh, uh, that's understand. Like, I understand. Um, it's okay. Like, she she seemed like she. Um, but what did she confront you? Like, what what did she say? Which is, if you can remember. Um, she mentioned Amsterdam and that night that we had shared the bed together and how she felt. Um, uncomfortable that I was like cuddling her um, and then uh, like th that she told me to stop and that like um, I like she was like oh, I think she thanked me for like turning around or, or something along those lines and then I like I said I explained my side of the story and like how I felt and like what I felt like transpired um, and she seemed to understand it like she was like oh it's okay like um, I'm sorry about this, like, I, I must have just, like, got the wrong impression, and I was like, it's okay, like, it's your experience, I just, like, I'm glad that you, uh, felt comfortable enough to, like, confront me and be like, hey, what was this about, um, and then everything seemed cool, and, like, I even, uh, like, I messaged her after the phone call. He said, I'm very sorry for making you uncomfortable, I wasn't aware that I was doing so, and I'm sorry you felt that way. I said, oh, hey, I appreciate that. Just a reminder, if you're in bed with a girl and you're stroking her areas and she's doing absolutely nothing to respond, maybe don't continue. But honestly, I appreciate your apology. I genuinely believe you. Dumb. Dumb. Like Evan said in one of his videos, I, it's a flaw, like to see the best in people. And so I forgave him. Yeah, that was never my intention, essentially. And she was like, oh, I understand, um, like, don't worry, I'm not out to like ruin your reputation or like uh, anything like that. Um, which is ironic, seeing as she made a video like months after. She kind of, and you said you didn't care about your image, but little did you know. And I feel like it um, kind of ruined a lot for me. So like, as you know, like I had started my relationship with Kate and we started off with like, this whole accusation and like yeah i feel like it affected uh my relationships as well as like my friendships and like how i interacted with people and when i came back to england like i felt like i was 
like an outcast. Like I didn't feel like I could go out and like do things. I didn't, I, f I didn't feel safe because of all of like the verbal, um, the abuse that I was receiving online. Like, um, there were places that I would go to frequently that were like my happy places. So for example, like I, I didn't even feel like I could go into Waterloo because that's where a lot of YouTube meetups, uh, happened like Jubilee Gardens right next to it. And, um, if I was ever going to see a friend or like going out to do something and I had to make a change at Waterloo, like I'd feel very anxious and like just scared that I might bump into someone that I knew or uh, someone would just like harass me in person. And I just felt like very alone, you know, was, like I just didn't yeah. feel comfortable. It was, it was pretty vicious. I mean, like I, I recall because obviously you you were spending time with Kate, who was my roommate, and you know I live with her. Yeah. And Damon was m our my neighbor. <laughs> he literally yeah. lived like two doors down. And I guess I don't know if at some point Dodi caught wind of you know him also interacting with you as well as all of us, you know. Yeah. yeah. And when I was looking through old tweets, I saw that she was also yelling at him mm -hmm. and saying that he, that Damon was hanging out with a rapist, and I'm like. What's going on? Like, like, how how can this develop so intense? Like, I mean, this dude is known for calling out Abuse. Sam Pepper, yeah, yeah, and Austin Jones, you know, and, and he would not stand for that. We need to not try to protect people. We need to spit out the honest truth and start looking out for people and try protecting the victims. It's funny that you should mention um, Damon in all of this because I was actually scared to be friends with people online, and I would specifically tell them like don't put me on your social media right, yeah. i don't want to be in your videos like i don't want to be on your instagram because i knew that my friends would be attacked and i didn't want that for them and especially with kate like we had just started our relationship i didn't want her to experience the nastiness of like the internet and stuff like that so i always felt like i had to be very careful with what i did online and like what posts i was putting out and like yeah you guys would always post like really like subtle relationship type pictures yeah because like at the time like we loved each other and like we wanted to be able to be like hey like look at our relationship like all, all the great things that we're doing together but at the same time i would be too scared to bring her into this world that she never asked for and like i don't know i just wanted to defend her like and i wanted to keep her safe from like the nasty people online because she like has already experienced a lot of that on her own, like with her previous uh, relationships online yeah. and that sort of thing. It, it did affect our relationship um, because she felt like I, I was just trying to hide her from the internet and like I, I wanted to seem single online and, and like um. that sort of thing. But I just didn't feel safe or comfortable enough to sort of like expose my friends to my drama. And like I was in, um, Louis, there, there was this one time where we were hanging out and like I was briefly in one of his vlogs and people just ripped into it being like, how could you hang out with a rapist? I can't believe that you're like this, Louis, blah, blah, blah. Like you should be more aware of like everything. Some things that I feel people might be wondering is like, why now? Which I feel like you kind of already answered. You, you probably, I mean, why now? Because I don't know. Well, why now? Just I, concise well, I was scared because the whole internet was attacking me at the time and I felt like I was being misunderstood and my words were being twisted and like I just didn't feel like I was able to voice my side of things um, and Jason at the time was also telling me like don't do this a big mistake like, like don't do a video yeah um, because people will take it the wrong way like they won't understand your side of things like basically because people have already labeled me as something like once people see you as something that like you can never change their mind that was essentially what he was telling me do you think the environment has changed do you think people might receive you better than they would then honestly i'm still scared like i still feel like um because like not much has changed in my life in terms of like being misunderstood i i i'm still worried and like i'm still scared that they will misunderstand me and not like see my perspective and um well not necessarily just my perspective but they won't look at like the whole situation and they'll just sort of like look at 
this one accusation and be like, oh, this is gospel, like this is truth. There's nothing that can dispute that because stereotypically, like uh, the accuser is usually the one telling like the truth or like telling a story. Well, yeah, you don't want to doubt someone that's coming exactly. out, of course. And and again, I want to reemphasize that this is, that's not what this is sort of about. Mm. Um, I kind of just want to like, you know, show my friend's perspective because through looking back, I saw that Dodi and also Evan said that he deserves no place on the internet. I'm sure a lot of people said that as well. And in, in her video as well, like she kept hating on the point like, oh, Karim, this YouTuber, or like, I don't know if I can call him a YouTuber. Right, like, she called you a manipulator as well. And yeah, and like downplaying the fact that I made videos on YouTube because I was constantly shunned from that community. And like, I wasn't considered like a YouTuber because I hadn't been doing it as long as them a youtuber called or is he a youtuber a person called karim and because like i was a newcomer everyone was sort of like i don't know it's like oh the adults sit at this table like your kid like go sit at the kiddies thing like i was always like brushed off and like i was just not as big or like as cool as them and i was always hey, like, i feel you man i also had a lot of more popular youtube friends too yeah it sucks doesn't it <laughs> yeah now i have no friends now i'm just kidding i have a couple if you could say something to to dodi what would you say to her now honestly i haven't even thought about it there's there's been so many people who i've told my side of the story to and they've sort of like disliked her for it or just been like angry at like the situation but i never felt that like even till this day you if you felt angry no like i only felt um the only emotions i really felt were like betrayal or like Confused. i felt like exactly and like that I was backed into a corner where like all of a sudden like my friends were just attacking me right and like i can't be like oh what happened wasn't true like your side of the story is so bullshit like i never did anything because that that would be i don't know i just feel like it's kind of disrespectful to tell someone how they feel about a situation sure. and i accept that but like that's why i spoke to her on the phone and like that's why i messaged her being like this is me this is my intentions like this is what happened to me like from my side of things because i wanted her to know that there was no ill intentions, like there was no sort of like me even liking her more than a friend because I did like her. Like I, she was cool. Like all of them were cool. They were all my friends at one point. Do you have anything you'd want to say to Evan? Um, not unless I don't feel like I have anything specifically to say to Evan or like to Luke or to anyone involved. It's more of like a general, like why didn't you give me the chance to talk to you guys and like say my piece and like why did you guys not question me and like they just I, cut you off like wh why not yeah at like least I, hear I you meant out? nothing like i meant nothing that's how like, I like they never like asked you for your side basically you're saying no dodie was the only person who messaged me and i like i'm thankful for her for actually like approaching me and being like hey like blah 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 but I never had the opportunity to... To really, really talk. Because the same day exactly. she messaged you, she also kind of like dropped Made the video, the video and right. blocked me as well. So oh, I, I right. had no contact with her further after that. Okay. This might be a thing in the past for, for Dodie or Evan or something. Like this might be in the past for them. But this is this is something that's still been very present for, for Karim for the past four years. You know, it still affects him, obviously. So they might have forgotten about it. But like this is something that has kind of weighed him down and I just hope that you know you can proceed and continue to be creative because when I first met you you know you would help me make videos you wouldn't they would, you you got to be in like a little bit of one but you know you would help me with the camera work and stuff and um yeah I don't know it, it's a very very difficult thing to cover um and I, I hope people can just use perspective and I hope you can continue to be creative I hope so too. And I just we wanted... ran out of battery on that camera, so let's yeah. get you on this one. Uh, I just wanted, like, last thing I wanted to say is thank you so much to Edwin for sort of like giving me the opportunity. And I know, like, I haven't been like a hundred percent with meeting up to film this and stuff like that, you know. But um, I just wanted to say thanks because I felt so scared for so long. And it literally mentally drained me 
where I felt like I could never make this video and if it wasn't for you, I don't think I would have even attempted it, to be honest. So I just wanted to say thanks. <laughs> no problem, dude. Um, yeah, I, I remember last year, oh man, I, I remember last year when I visited, you know, and you let me and Mina stay at your place. Yeah. We didn't really have anywhere to stay because Mina doesn't have a good family situation. And, um, I remember you people commenting on my videos and I remember offering you, dude, like if you need me to say it on my channel, like anything, anything. Cause I, I, I it, it was also like such a bummer to have people comment on my videos and just say all this stuff. And it's like, I know, and that's another thing, like, I never wanted to be in people's videos or, like, be friends with people, like, who had a social media presence and stuff like that, because I knew that people would try and vil villainize them just for being my friend or just for speaking to me or, like, hanging out or whatever, like, I just felt like I had, I was so, like, I had to pull myself away from the internet and just be alone and like I could never have friends again man. yeah it, it's it's a catch it, it's a catch because like I I couldn't make you do the videos like I knew that I couldn't tell you hey defend yourself stick up for yourself a little bit say at least what you it's on your mind because you can't just push someone to speak up about their what they're going through so that's why I kind of offered you a platform if you want to just casually say well I'm filming it or whatever and um, I don't know, I, I think, I hope, I hope that this video could cover everything. All right, now without making this outro too, too long, thank you guys so much for listening. And um, yeah, we'll see you, see you next time. Cheers.